Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. I would be less than honest if I didn't admit that career success is mainly a function of intelligence, drive, technical depth, and yes, luck. But fortunately, there are easier, less potent, but still valuable baby steps that you can take to improve your career. I'm going to focus here on things that you can do on the job rather than during your job search or career search. First, negotiate your role. Even if you've been in your job a while, but especially if you've been offered a position but haven't yet accepted it, you might negotiate to have your job description tweaked to accentuate your strengths and preferences and to skirt your weaknesses. That benefits both you and the employer. Also, if you're upwardly aspiring, try to get onto projects where your efforts will be visible. I'll say more about that in a few minutes. The next tip is, tip is to map the power. It's sad but true, but your success depends in part on power people's good graces. Sometimes they're the obvious ones, your boss and your boss's boss, but sometimes even, say, an administrative assistant can be a power source. Write the names of those power people, what you know about each, what you should learn about them, and how you might build a positive relationship. One size does not fit all. With one person, you might have a personal discussion or three. Another person might be most impressed if you simply put your head down and quietly did your job. Still, another person might be most motivated by your asking, I have a little extra bandwidth. Is there anything I can do to make your life easier? Next tip, hitch to a star. This is a corollary of the previous tip. In some workplaces, there's a person you have or could have access to who's a star, maybe a rising star. Try to get to report to that person, or if that's infeasible, you might ask that person, even when you're just, quote, running into them in the break room, a variation on the pitch that I just mentioned in the previous paragraph. Here is what it is. I have a little extra bandwidth, and I've heard great things about you and would welcome the opportunity to do some work for you. Is there any way that I might be of help? Even if the person says no, that's a not-too-pushy way to get on the person's radar screen. Next, communicate well. Communication is the currency of the workplace realm. Try to make your communication skills of high value. These tips can help. Follow the traffic light rule. To avoid being seen as a Billy Blowhard or Chatty Cathy, remember that in your utterance's first 30 seconds, your light is green. In the second 30 seconds, it's yellow, and after 60 seconds, you better stop. Follow the 30-50 rule. In a two-person conversation, talk 30 to 50% of the time. In a multi-person conversation, a little less than your proportionate share of the time. Speak like a musician. Vary your volume, your pitch, and your pace. Your baseline rate should, however, be slow to moderate. Fast talkers can be difficult to understand and are viewed as sleazy or out of control. Cut your losses. When your statement is rebuffed, at maximum make one rejoinder. Beyond that, the chances are greater that you're just not getting it than that you're being wisely persistent. Learn public speaking. Even if it's just a one-minute report at a meeting, being crisp, focused, and ideally entertaining is invaluable. Perhaps surprising, scripting, or other over-preparation is inimical to good public speaking. Rather, have a few talking points and extemporize. The loss of smoothness will usually be more than compensated for by the improved connectedness that comes from an unscripted talk. Gain charisma. Key, ironically, is the trivial. Looks. For example, erect but not rigid posture gains credibility. Walking crisply but not hurriedly makes you seem confident. Dressing one level above your current job makes you look like an up-and-comer. Beyond that, the communication tips I just mentioned uh, will also help you gain charisma. Err toward positivity. That also will help you gain charisma. Of course, there's a time to criticize. But the more often you criticize, the less seriously you'll probably be taken and the more likely you'll be seen as a naysayer, the opposite of charismatic. Talk more about we than I. Too much I is viewed as egotistical, the sense that if you were that good, you wouldn't need to talk so much about yourself. Next tip, balance other directedness with self-focus. Rabbi Hillel said, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? But if I am only for myself, who am I? Sadly, in many workplaces, selfless people are often taken advantage of. And conversely, 
the purely self-serving, let alone one who will step on whomever to rise, is disliked, often sabotaged. So strike the balance. Take care of yourself. As appropriate, speak up for yourself. But where it makes sense, be generous with your time and attention. Take on a custom project. If you can muster some extra bandwidth, take on a project you'd enjoy and that uses your best skills. Usually you'll need to ask your boss's permission, especially if you're asking for release time from your other tasks. But occasionally it's wiser to just do it and if needed, apologize later. With a bit of subtle PR, for example, sending a draft of your project to others for quote-unquote feedback, you'll have derived significant credit. Get technical. Of course, workplaces are getting ever more tech-centric. But even if you're no techie, see if you can find something technical to learn that your employer would value and that might daunt others but that you could learn. Ideally, pick something that would appeal to other employers so it's a resume builder if you end up looking for different employment. And finally, up is not the only way. Sure, promotions mean status and money, but often also mean longer work days, more stress, and perhaps unwanted travel. Don't just be a lemming climbing the ladder. Decide the extent to which you want to rise. Success has many definitions, and an under-considered one is whether your current job, or even a step down, is wise. Like most of my talks, this one offers a buffet of ideas. There's no need to eat it all. But is there one or two tips that might be good baby steps toward your career success, however you define it? In any event, I thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up, accept your thumbs down, your comments, hitting the share button and sharing on your social media, and or subscribing to my channel. And again, I do appreciate you watching. I am Marty Nemco.